All right, welcome to our podcast on showing versus telling in academic writing. This is a pretty important skill as you advance through the high school ranks, and so we wanted to make sure that we made some mention of this. So before we start, though, let's go ahead and take a look at Jerry Maguire. I'm ready. I just want to make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. Show you the money. Oh, no, no, you can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it, what you would mean it, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I better hear you say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Show you the money. Not, not show you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. Louder. Show me the money. That's it, brother, but you got to yell that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. Show me the money. Gonna do, Jerry. Congratulations, you're still my agent. And so I think we'd agree that he has um, made his point to Rod that he will definitely show him the money with great passion, enthusiasm, and zeal. I think that's the point. It wasn't enough for Jerry Maguire to just say, yes, I will show you the money. Yes, I will, I will do the job that you're asking. No, no, no. You really need to show me. You really need to get in there and give me evidence that you will do this for me. And we need to take that idea and that passion and that excitement into our writing uh, to really help out our readers in terms of truly understanding what we're trying to say. Very often in academic writing, we simply tell things. A, it's boring, but B, it's not detailed enough. We are not making our thinking clear to somebody who is reading our essay. Therefore, we need to up the ante a little bit here and do a little bit more showing versus just telling. The biggest problem with just telling is that something is completely clear in our head since we're the writer. And we go ahead and write one or two sentences, and we think that because it's clear in our head and we've written one or two sentences, that it must be absolutely clear in our reader's heads. And therefore, we stop short of completing the circle or of completely showing what we mean. The problem is that that makes the reader infer. Think back to the podcast we watch about inference and interpretation. When we are, f- are faced with a text that has some dots out there, and we as readers are forced to connect the dots, there might be some margin of error. We might get it wrong. Now, if we flip that whole thing and we say that we are the writer We want to make sure that we are connecting all of our dots for that reader so that the reader doesn't have to do any thinking. Because the point of an essay is to share your thinking, that of the writer. So why would you want to make the reader guess what you're trying to say? We want to make sure that as a writer, we show, we connect all the dots. We make our thinking explicitly clear to the reader. They shouldn't have to guess, they shouldn't have to connect dots, they shouldn't have to infer anything. So I like to use a picture of a bridge to kind of serve as a metaphor for what we're trying to say here. On the left-hand side of the picture, we have one bank of this river here, and this is our understanding as writers of a topic. We are the experts on something. We know what we think. We know what makes us think what we think. The challenge is our reader is standing on the other side of this bridge. They are either trying to understand the topic that we're going to share with them, or, as is often the case in academic writing in schools, they are trying to understand what we think and why we think what we think. But they're not us. They're a completely different person. They're not in our heads. They can't rip open our skull, see our brain working, and go, oh, okay, well, that's what they mean. So the only way that they can understand what we are saying as writers is if we are very clear in our writing. And so the point is we need to build a bridge of understanding. We need to connect what we know to what they need to know. And we need to make sure that we are connecting dots for the readers. That is our goal as writers. 
Now this is completely different if you're writing a novel, a short story, some sort of fictional piece. If you're writing a piece of fiction, go nutty. Leave holes, leave gaps, make your reader infer. That's what makes literature enjoyable to read, is that the reader has to struggle a little bit and connect some dots. We're not talking about that kind of writing right now. We are talking about academic essay writing. And the point of essay writing is to make your opinion, your perspective, your thinking as the writer explicitly clear to somebody else. Therefore, we do not want them to have to infer. So, we need to show in our writing, and you're going to hear us say this comment over and over again throughout the year. We can't just tell what happened, we need to show it, either through more description or maybe a direct quote. We can't just say, this was connected to this definition or this example, we need to show it. We need to reason through it. We can't just say, yes, the title of the book, To Kill a Mockingbird, was symbolic because it was symbolic. Well, what does that mean? Why? You know, we have to show the connection. We have to show our thinking as writers. We have to say, here's what we see. Here's what we read. Here's what it meant to us. And therefore, this is why it is so. We have to connect those dots. We must write more in order to show completely. We're going to show you an example here of kind of the progression from telling to showing to better showing. And so, Think about this as you're looking at it. Where could the reader make mistakes? Where could the reader question something? Where could the reader get the wrong idea? And where does the reader feel completely satisfied that the writer has proven his or her point? Because ultimately, you can see the assignment here. We're going to ask you to A, tell us that you're good at something. And then B, we're going to ask you to show us you're good at something. But you have to do that through your writing. You can't show us, show us a picture of you winning some award. You can't show us your mechanically perfect baseball bat swing. You have to show us you're good at something through your writing. And so you want to make sure that all your dots are connected and that your writer truly believes what you're saying. So let's take a look at that example of the writing. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this one. The writer has chosen to tell us that he is good at driving. Okay, so something that's something that's very visual. It'd be easy for us to see if this person is good at driving if we could watch them, but we can't. All we have at our disposal is their writing. And so at the beginning, they tell us, I am good at driving. Okay, great. Okay, thanks for telling us. But then we say, okay, show us you are good. And so they start to make some efforts at showing. They write, I am good at driving. I am good at driving because I have been a driver for 40 years. I am also good at driving because I have a Ford Mustang. Finally, I am good at driving because I like to drive. In conclusion, I am good at driving for the above reasons. Now, is it better than the first one where they just told us? Yeah, but are there questions that the reader still has? Where are dots that need to be connected? I mean, where has the writer said something that doesn't necessarily prove that they're good? Second question, do you believe that the author is good at driving just based on what they said? I mean, look at that example. I'm good at driving because I have a Ford Mustang. So, how does having a certain type of car make you good? I mean, you're still having to you know, turn the wheel and apply the brakes and things like that. Why does the type of car matter for how you are as a driver? And just that last question. What seems to be lacking here? What dots are left unconnected? Where do we need to see more? Where does the writer need to show more? And really truly prove beyond a doubt that he is good at, ri at driving. So now, let's go ahead and look at a slightly revised draft. And no, it's not perfect. Uh, you know, If we really wanted to prove that we were good at driving, we probably have to do a little bit more writing. But it is a step. So the original is written in black. And then you can see some changes made in red. So let's see what they say. In the revised draft, they say, I am good at driving. Okay, great. Topic sentence. Let's, let's see it. I'm good at driving because I've been a driver for 40 years. Well, so what? So, I mean, there's many things that I've done for years and years and years, but I'm still not good at it yet. Why does experience necessarily mean that you're good at something? It might just mean you're experienced at it, but I could still be really bad at it. 
I mean, I have played the piano for many, many years. Granted, I've never taken a lesson. I've never really practiced, but I've played it for many years. So just because I'm experienced at plunking out simple tunes doesn't make me necessarily good. So we need to show more. So let's see what they say. In those 40 years, I have taken five defensive driving courses and have graduated at the top of my class in each. Also, over those 40 years, I have not received any traffic citations, even though I have to drive to work each day and have many opportunities to receive speeding tickets or traffic citations. Okay, the writer's getting closer. They're trying to say that not only have I been a driver for 40 years, but I have done some practicing. I have done some strong examples of good driving over those 40 years. They said they haven't received a traffic citation in 40 years. Now, again, the skeptical reader might say, well, what if you live on a farm and you don't have to drive at all? Big deal. It's not that hard not to get a ticket over 40 years. But the reader is trying to show, trying to say, but hey, I have to drive to work every day. And I've had many opportunities to get get a ticket, but I still haven't. That's starting to prove that they are a good driver. The next example they gave from the original is, I am also good at driving because I have a Ford Mustang. Upon revision, we're just simply going to take that out. That makes no sense at all. Just because you have a certain type of car doesn't mean you're good or bad in any way. So they rewrite that and they say, I am also good. Nice transition. I am also good at driving because I have received numerous driving awards from the National Highway Traffic Safety Board. Then they're going to go ahead and explain why that's good. This federal government agency only gives out one award every 20 years, and I have received five in my last 40 years of driving. Clearly, this group of educated experts agrees that I am good. I am a good and strong driver, so strong that they felt the need to bestow me with these glorious awards. Is it exaggeration? Of course it is. But we're trying to show that you're good. You're trying to say, hey, I won an award. Well, what if that award was just for showing up on time. That doesn't mean you're good. And so they go a step farther to say, they only give them out so often. I've won more than my fair share, that these people really truly believe I'm good, trying to build credibility. And that's the point, that we need to show through our writing, not just tell. Too often, we as academic writers just say, oh yeah, yeah, this is a symbol because it's a symbol. Oh yeah, yeah, this is imagery because it creates an image. Well, how? How does it create an image? What specific word creates a sound image in your head? What specific word creates a visual image in the reader's head? You need to show us why you think what you think. That is the key in academic writing. So with this example under your belt, it's not perfect. It's fully not not even complete. You can see that there's probably a a second or third example that we need to have fully developed and shown, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea of the, the beginning differences between just showing and telling. So go ahead and get a start on that homework for tomorrow. Tell us what you're good at, and then start crafting a paragraph or paragraphs where you show us that you are good at what you say you're good at. All right, good luck.